the West has been praising Zelensky as the new Winston Churchill, which just you know goes to underscore the level of delusion that has possessed the West. But now you're getting in all quarters in Washington and London, and Germany, and, and throughout the rest of NATO, these recriminations being expressed about the, the Ukraine's failure to press the counteroffensive, failure to listen to the advice of the West, that they're always begging for more. So this, you know, this is starting to uh, become a more common thing. So I think the next, next natural step, whether the, the CIA does it or the CIA encourages somebody to do it, uh, I don't think Zelensky's long for the world. Uh, he's not the kind of guy that I think is going to be allowed to go off into exile where he'll be sunning himself down in Miami Beach. Breaking news. President Zelensky is about to be assassinated by Joe Biden. This hot take from former CIA analyst and professional shitster Larry C. Johnson makes him our first nominee for Useful Idiot of the Week award. Guys like Larry thrive on new media like Instagram, TikTok, and Telegram, which just turned 10 years old this week. Most people associate Telegram with Russia, but since the war in Ukraine began, Telegram and other sites like it are the battlefield for the information warfare and propaganda, which makes them very important. And they're just perfect for people like Larry Johnson to spread fabricated messages. Meet Clayton Morris, useful idiot candidate number two. A journalist who had to flee the US to Portugal after his real estate Ponzi scheme collapsed in 2019. Here he is on the phone with one of his defrauded investors. Let's listen. No, I mean, the liberal press has had their, had their that's why the conservative press hasn't touched it because they know it's a bullshit story. Um, but Clayton, you're, really you're literally in the Portugal, the though. I'll let you. Like, you, you see how that looks. You're, you're actually in Portugal. So, I mean, I, I, I think <laughs> claiming it's bullshit when you're, you've literally left America, I, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know how it, this is any of your business. Yep, Clayton, baby, when you rip off people of millions of dollars, it's everybody's business now. Pro Kremlin shills like Larry and Clayton are not just confined to the dark corners of the internet. Some of them are actually on the ground in Ukraine. Meet Patrick Lancaster, a former US naval officer, getting a hard on about launching kamikaze drones on Ukrainian troops. I'm Patrick Lancaster, and right now we are in Russian-controlled territory on the front line near the city of Ugladar. Uh, Ugladar is controlled by Ukraine forces, but we're here with Russian forces, and we're going to be documenting how they launch uh, FPV uh, kamikaze drone onto Ukrainian military positions. Um, this is something we haven't seen before, and we're happy to bring this to you uh, just because we believe you deserve to see things on both sides of the line. It's called Vuhledar, you prick. Don't let the press badge fool you. Patrick is not exactly a journalist. The only mainstream channels he's worked for are Russia Today and Zvezda, which is a star. And in fact, he's so bad at his job that he often reveals secrets and compromising Russian military information by just accidents. What a stupid idiot. Thank you. So now we're going to see Russian forces launching this kamikaze drone. Hang on a second. Can we get a closer look at the drone? <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Good to know exactly what we're up against. Although it looks more like a school science project than a weapon of mass destruction. The bad have called me everything from a left-wing hack to a sociopath to even a self-hating Jew. This joke is Max Blumenthal, a son of former Bill Clinton aide Sidney Blumenthal, and he's our next useful idiot candidate. Max used to be a well-respected journalist working for outlets like The New York Times, The LA Times, and Al Jazeera. But somewhere around 2015, a switch flipped and he began publishing materials consisted of Russian propaganda about the Nazi coup in Kiev or the genocide of Russian-speaking population in Donbas. Taking leave of his gray matter, he set up a far-left website called The Gray Zone, which has downplayed Chinese persecution of the Uyghurs and Assad's human rights abuses in Syria. Since when did the left start literally standing up for authoritarian regimes? I, I actually grew up in DC during the crack epidemic. And as I watched Zelensky, I mean, getting more and more desperate, he started to remind me of the pipe heads that used to follow me home from school. And he's like, it's never good enough for him. He's like, the cluster bombs bite it. They're not hitting like they used to. I need the big one bite it. 
I need the nuclear weapon. I need the nuclear I'll suck your dead body. What I think really happened was that a uh, Biden official, like Tony Blinken or something, came to Vladimir Zelensky and said, we can't find another Jewish guy to cover up for all this Nazi shit. We're just gonna have to get like a Nazi guy in there. So you have to stay in there for as long as possible. Zelensky's Jewish. And Zelensky was like, okay, just gonna keep it going. I think at this point, the word Nazi has begun to lose its meaning. So let me just ask you this. Do Nazis have a free press, democratic elections, freedom of speech, meaningful political opposition? Because Ukraine has all those things. You know who doesn't? A f***ing Russia. And I guess China and Saudi Arabia and, well, the list actually goes on, so a lot. But uh, we in Ukraine are fighting to defend our country, our homes, our families. And Ukraine has never once asked for the US or UK or any of our allies to fight this war for us. All we have asked is to give us the things we need to win. So yes, we want cluster bombs. Yes, we want F-16s. No, we don't want nukes. And while it may be fun for champagne socialists like Max to play around with provocative attention-seeking opinions, the reality is that people are dying in Ukraine. Not just soldiers, not just first responders, but all people, women and children. So this is for you, Max. You want yourself the number one spot on our Useful Idiots board. If you want to help us pick the next winner, send your favorite examples of pro-Russian propaganda to info at europeanedge.show and we'll use them on air.